Indonesia has never liked China poking its nose in the South China Sea. China claims over 90% of the South China Sea as its own. For countries in Southeast Asia, that's an outlandish and borderline ridiculous assertion, one which they all reject. Some countries, though, are subtle about their opposition to China. Some are even non-confrontational. And then there are others who like to take the bull by its horns. Indonesia, for one, has made a move that has irked Beijing once again. Naturally, if Beijing believes most of the South China Sea to be its territory, it also believes that the natural resources of the region are its property. But Indonesia, like many others, disagrees. So what has Jakarta done that has irked China? And should other countries in the region follow Indonesia's lead? Hello and welcome, this is Shubhangi Sharma and you're watching First Post. Last week, Indonesia's government approved an offshore gas project worth over $3 billion. Pretty normal, right? A country setting up a gas project within its exclusive economic zone. In the South China Sea, such a move is anything but normal. In fact, it's a direct challenge to China's claims. Indonesia's large natural gas field will be developed in the Tuna block near the Natuna Islands. The gas project will be set up within Indonesia's exclusive economic zone. That means Jakarta has the right to exploit natural resources in this zone and there's nothing China can do about it under international law. But that's not how China sees it. You see, the Tuna field also comes under China's so-called Nine Dash Line which Beijing uses to stake claim on nearly the entire South China Sea. Perhaps that is why Beijing sent its largest Coast Guard vessels to patrol Indonesia's Natuna Islands last week. The gas project will yield peak production of 115 million cubic feet daily by 2027. Preliminary plans suggest that the gas will be exported to Vietnam. Indonesia has made it clear that this is much more than just an economic project. The chairman of the oil and gas regulator has said this, the red and white flag will fly over the project location. He was referring to Indonesia's flag. The chairman added, the Indonesian Navy will join in securing the upstream energy project so that both economically and politically, it will become an affirmation of Indonesia's sovereignty over that area. That's precisely what Indonesia is doing. It is affirming its sovereignty over the area by developing the gas project. Since 2014, President Joko Widodo, who is popularly known as Jokowi, has done a lot to stand up to China. Confrontations between China and Indonesia in the region have occurred several times, most prominently in 2016 when Chinese Coast Guard stopped the Indonesian authorities from detaining a Chinese fishing boat in the waters around the Natuna Islands. Then, in 2017, Indonesia renamed the northern reaches of its exclusive economic zone in the South China Sea as the North Natuna Sea. That was an open challenge to China's territorial claims in the region. In 2018, Indonesia inaugurated a new military command base on Natuna Besar, which is the cluster's main island. Indonesia also amped up naval and air patrols in the area. In 2021, when the Indonesians sent a rig to the tuna block for some exploratory drilling, the Chinese sent their coast guard. Jakarta responded by dispatching its own naval and law enforcement ships in the area. Back then, China asked Indonesia to immediately stop drilling in the area. Indonesia refused to oblige and has now rolled out an entire gas project to counter China. President Jokowi has been also consciously raising Indonesia's defense capabilities while also strengthening ties with the likes of the United States, Japan and India. Indonesia's decision to develop the offshore gas project will increase the likelihood of a confrontation with China. Do you think Indonesia should continue pushing on? Do let us know in the comments.